God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one today is 10th day of August. Be Saturday and week 18 in another time of the church calendar. Today, the Monday church celebrates the feast of St. Lawrence, Deacon and Matter of the Church. And readings will be coming from second letter of support to the Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 10. And response to sound will come from Psalm 112, verse 5a. A gospel message will come from John Gospel chapter 12, verse 24 to 26. The theme of our message today is, unless a grain of wheat falls and dies, elements alone. Yes. Unless a, a grain of wheat falls and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it will use abundant of fruit. We're well, family season now. If you have, allow a, corn, if a, a grain of corn, one can go into the soil and dies, and it will bring up a new corn and yield abundant fruit. The same thing with all of us. If you sacrifice yourself, for the glory of God and for good of that, as you will yield abundant of fruit. But when you are full of self, you are worth nothing. You are of no value, even to yourself and to your environment. You can experience it with the Nigerian government of these days. Bundle of self. Their eyes are closed, they are blind, they are impervious to reasons. Arrogant with impunity. That will just begin to address this issue today. Unless a boy falls and die, he remains say alone. But if he dies, we need abundance of fruit. And anyone who wants to save this life will lose it. Yes, go and see all those people. Who think that politicians are acquiring this, they lose it at the end of the day. But anyone who loses his life for my sake will keep it. Yes, he will save it. When you sacrifice your life for the good of others, you will save their life. Yes. And that's why Jesus began to give this teaching today. And he goes on to tell us the importance of that. If you are truly a true follower of Christ, Christ is the first person who gave himself for the glory of God and for good of others. He's the one who died that others might live. He became naked to clothe others. He became a slave to make others freeborn. Yes. He became poor to enrich us. He became a cause to bless us. He lowered himself to lift us up, and he has saved his life. But those who are opposite of this, they have lost their lives. Now he's telling us, if anyone says, serves me, if truly you are full of Christ, you must follow me. Yes, you must follow his footsteps. So most people who should do otherwise are not true members of Christ, truly. They are members, as are Christians, and all, but they are not. And where I am, there shall my servant be also. Where I am, my servant will be also. If I'm there giving my life for the glory of others, my servants will be there giving out their life for the glory of others, good of others, and glory of God. If I lord myself, my servant will lord themselves to lift others up. If I became a cause for others to be blessed, my servants will become a cause for others to be blessed. Says what that, that was, who claim to be a man of God, that's what you are doing. If it's otherwise, you are not of Christ. And he said us again one of the importance of this. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. You see, when you serve Christ in this, if you serve me, if you follow my footsteps, my Father will honor you. Yes, he will be honored in life and in death, although he will not even die. And now why today Paul was telling the Ephesians this, the Corinthians this in a different form. He who sows sparsely will live sparsely. As you sow, so you will live. He who sows bountifully will live bountifully. Each one will do as he had made up. Yes, you give as you have made up your mind to do. No person compares you. Not reluctantly. Yes. Not under compulsion, yes. It's what you do out of your free mind, choose. For God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. You give for the glory of God and for the good of God, cheerfully. Not in pains and sorrows, as you say, you're under bondage. 
And God is over. You cannot be more generous than God. When you have been given yourself, cheerfully give to others, God in turn will be able to provide you with every blessing in abundance. He will provide you with every blessing in abundance. That's a promise. So that you may always have enough for, of everything. You have enough of everything you cannot lack. I may provide in abundance for every good works. Every good work, you have enough to provide for it. As it is written, he scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies, yes, he who supplies the seed to the sewer and the bread for, the, for food will supply and multiply you. Look at it. He will supply you and multiply your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You can't do God in generosity. When you have done, decided to sacrifice yourself for the glory of God, for the glory of that, you can't do God. He will multiply you. Yes, as well as what you do cheerfully, you can regret it. And I want the psalmist who understood this very basic today, this year. It goes well for the man who deals generously and learns. This generously and learns. Always thinking for the good of others and glory of God. Generosity he gives, and generosity he lends to people, what he has. Now what they were celebrating St. Jorah, Lawrence, the deacon, who epitomized this dying for us to live. And that's the motto of our security organization, dying that others might live. Our charity organization motto, living for others. And now what St. Lawrence did today, Lawrence was a great man, one of the greatest, the most famous, one of the most, if I not the, the most famous saint in Roman Empire. Lawrence is a deacon. We're told that Lawrence as a deacon, full of love for the poor, he full of love for the poor, caring for the poor, he became poor to reach them. And because he's very careful for the poor, what did he do? He only went further. Feed with courage. He was filled with courage before his torturers. And they call it very humorous in suffering. Yes. Look at how Lawrence came to be. Very courageous in suffering in the face of his torturers, and graces of humor in face of all the sufferings. He still had it. He still had it that Lawrence, when he was, was roasted, they roasted him. A, a, gila, a giron. And he roasted. And at the point, he was telling the people who are roasting him, one side is done, turn the, the other side. Humorously, they say this. The person who was dying on fire say this side is done, done the other one. And what is your face of? Because after killing the Pope, as a deacon, he was asked to bring the property of the church, and they brought the poor people to the place, to the annoyance of the king. Say this is the property of the church. The poor people are the properties. The church is happy. And the emperor who was expecting good and everything things was so annoyed and decided to roast him in fire. And Rollins cheerfully accepted this. He became a died that others might live. I was celebrating him today, a great saint. He had a great devotion was for him. He had the greatest devotion in the first century, all over the place. St. Lawrence, the deacon. May God help us understand that unless we give up ourselves for the glory of God and for good others, we need abundant food. If we do that, we need abundant of food. Otherwise, we'll be alone and die like, I say, we didn't exist at all. May God help us understand this message today through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us, and we resolve to follow Christ in all his footsteps as his follower. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. Music